everybody. Welcome to the Cincy Junior Sabbath School Show. My name is Daisy and we're on lesson three for both PowerPoint and Cornerstone lessons. Before you start, if you don't have the lesson book, you can get it at www.juniorpowerpoint.org or cornerstoneconnections.net. I hope you can go check them out. The title, the title for the PowerPoint lesson is Prom A Promise Kept. The key text can be found from 2 Peter 3 verse 9 and it reads, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repent to repentance. The power text is, God always keeps his promises. Also for the title for the cornerstone lesson is the syndrome. The key text can be found from Revelation 12, 7 to 9. And it reads, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, so the great dragon was cast out. Their serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you'll stay tuned for the, for the PowerPoint and Cornerstone discussions. God bless you. My name is Michelle. And my name is Quentin. Uh, thank you all for joining <laughs> our show today. Um, uh, before we start, Michelle, can you give us a Let us bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly <laughs> Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for bringing us onto this place. I pray that whatever we speak of, um, everybody who's listening are able to take from something from this. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So um, our videos are replayed on Hope TV on uh, Sundays at 12 p.m., Tuesdays at 3 p and uh, Tuesdays at 3 p.m. CB Radio replays our videos on their page every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and Obrat TV replays our videos every Monday through Friday. So now we're going to move on to our um, PowerPoint lesson for today. And as Daisy said, we are on lesson three. The title is A Promise Kept, and the power text is found from 2 Peter 3, verse 9. And basically, the lesson was about um, how uh, a continuation from last week's where um, where there's like a famine or whatever, and like uh, there was no rain, and how God like protected Elijah during that time, and um, all the prayers that like Elijah was praying to God, um, like he was listening to him while he was out in like the desert and like in on the mountain, etc. So now we're going to move on to our questions for today. And the first question for the PowerPoint discussion is, have you ever prayed for something and you didn't get an answer right away? Um, yes, that has happened to me before. Yeah, me too, likewise. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that I've prayed for. Some have seriously waited and no response yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with all of you. Um, there's times where I pray to God about things and I, like I, something that like I thought I was just gonna get an answer like right away, and then I didn't hear anything, and then like nothing changed about like the situation, and I was at times like it brings like confusion as to like why like we're taught that like oh you take everything to God in prayer, but then like your prayer doesn't get answered the way you wanted it to. So that leads me to my next question. 
Why do you think God delays his answers to our prayers? Um, sometimes I think it's to test our patience and whether we really believe he'll do it for us. Mm-hmm. And also to this question, it stands on the question one that you asked. Mm-hmm. You see, as Christians, we should realize that God answers prayers in three forms. Yes, no, and wait. Mm-hmm. The yes part is possibly the stuff that you pray for and easily get answers to, right? The immediate ones. Some are a complete no, whereby regardless of what you say, regardless of how fasting you're going to have in days, weeks, or months, it's just a no. And there are others which is a wait form of an answer, whereby it's not that you're going to get the answer to your prayer immediately, but it could take some time. Sometimes you can even forget it, Mm -hmm. and you'll get the answer to it. The reason is this. God knows us more than we do. Mm -hmm. And he knows how we can handle an answered prayer. Mm-hmm. Is it something that can consume us ourselves? Mm-hmm. Can we use it for the purpose as it is established for? Or would it debunk the fact that we should praise God for that? So if it will rather raise ourselves alone in selfish praise, God will answer that. And once he knows us and he created us, he knows precisely when to answer it. So when we have a delay in our prayers, It means God knows what he is doing and he is preparing us for the right time and the right moment for the solution to the prayer. Thank you for your answer. I'd like to remind our viewers that you guys are part of our discussion, so any questions I may ask, you may put your answers in the comments below. Um, I'd say to that that question that like um, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 reminds me that like God has a plan for me. So even though like I may have a my own plan for my life that's not the plan that god has for me so even though i may ask for something he's like that's not in my plan you just wait so that's why at times things may be delayed um the next question for our powerpoint discussion is if you could interview elijah what question would you ask him um i would ask him at times um was he feeling doubt did he like at times, like, was he, like, not sure if God even existed no more? Was he, like, questioning God? Mm-hmm. Mine would be, why would he run away when, she, when he was um, told by the woman that probably might kill him? Mm-hmm. After all the miracles and everything that God has done through him, mm-hmm. why that quick fear mm-hmm. that came from him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are really good questions. Um, in the comments, um, A.V. Uh, commented that prayer is the key, and I agree. Um, the last question for the PowerPoint discussion is, what are some promises that God has made onto us? Um, a promise that I'm sure everybody knows of is his second coming. Mm-hmm. And also, as we, we go through life, as we try to make the best out of ourselves, we should realize that come what may, he will come through for us. There are times where you would find yourself so devastated, thinking that there is no hope for the next second. Probably you might not have the means to eat your next meal, but the hope is assured. He is going to provide. As he said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he has given us a precise definition that we should seek him first and everything will be added. So most of the times, our decisions are made concerning our interest first that is a problem Mm -hmm. we should realize that we should put god first if we put him first everything and he means it everything minus zero to our thoughts all shall be answered Mm -hmm. let's believe in that um i'd say that a promise that like i always remember in my life is isaiah 41 verse 10 where um like whenever i'm in fear or like something is going on in my life and i feel like it's like bigger than me I know that, like, God is upholding me with his right hand, so I'll be okay. But um, thank you guys for your answers to the PowerPoint discussion. So now we're going to move on to the Cornerstone discussion. And the title for the Cornerstone is The Syndrome. And the key text is found from Revelation 12, verse 7 to 9. So now I have Michelle give us a sermon. Um, The Cornerstone lesson is about when... Um, Lucifer was um, trying to be higher than God in heaven and that him and his angels fought God and his angels and how he was still down from heaven. 
Thank you for your summary, Michelle. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our cornerstone discussion. And the first question for the cornerstone discussion is, what caused Lucifer to become corrupt? Um, it, I think it was selfish, self, selfish, self, selfish, selfishness. selfishness, yes. <laughs> All right, to add to that, aside him being selfish, mm -hmm. I think it was a gradual process. Mm -hmm. He envisaged in his eye something beyond himself. Mm -hmm. He felt he was the same as God. And he felt, why would Christ be equated to God? Whereas he being beautiful, whereas he being the head, let's say like the choir, mm -hmm. he, ha he having the best of voices, and he is popular or known much mm -hmm. within the congregation of the angels. He felt he should be number one, mm -hmm. all right? So it's a slow but sure process which led him to what he did. First is by his eyesight. Second is by he feeling beyond himself. And the third is by thinking that it's him or nobody else. So it sort of grew slowly and disobedience set in. He felt, if I'm not given this chance, then nothing is moving, all right? So as he continually built this, as in Ezekiel chapter 13 tells us, he grew this slowly and felt beyond the God himself who created him, all right? So it's more or less avoiding the second look, even to us, if I'm bringing it to a certain. Mm -hmm. If there is something that you want, um, Try to get it yourself. If you can't get it by your own working or effort, you realize that you don't need to take that. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a slow but sure process which can lead us badly as Satan did. So it's a lesson to us too. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you as answers. Um, uh, in the comments, Avi said uh, pride, which I agree with, considering that he wanted to be higher than others. But a question that I like necessarily had is if there was no like sin in the first place, how did pride even come into <laughs> Lucifer in the first place for it to be a downward spiral after that? <laughs> but um, moving on to our next question for the PowerPoint, dis I mean the cornerstone discussion. Why didn't God just get rid of sin completely when He could have? Um, so we talk a lot about this in pastor's class, mm -hmm. and the answer is usually because. If God had done that, then the rest of the angels would have wondered, why did God do that? Maybe Lucifer was right about what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, to add to what she said. You see, there was a clear confusion at that time. They realized that what was going on, it could be as he said, Satan is right. Mm -hmm. But God himself is just trying to succumb this way to prevent people from being as they want. All right. So it was a matter of power, power play, let me put it like that. It's a power play that was happening at that time. And if God had taken sin away at that time, mm -hmm. remember, the two-thirds of the angels who were not part of Satan's camp, clearly they didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. So they wanted clarity, understanding, comprehension of what was going on. And to get that clear, God had to use systematic process, whereby, as a matter of time, things will come to understanding by itself. Because if a person is confused and you act, it is what you acted that a person remembers, not the cause of the action, mm -hmm. all right? So to prevent an effect which would have been so bad and damaging to God himself, he had to take his time, make Christ come, as Satan continued to mess up with Garden of Aden, trying to deceive us even here in our time, whereby sometimes we get confused whether to follow God or not. Mm -hmm. These things have slowly been in place so that at the end, God will be vindicated. His glory will not be reduced. God's power as a creator wouldn't be something tarnished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your, your answers. Um, I'd say that um, another answer would be due to like the power of choice. Because if he sat there and just like got rid of Satan, just got rid of sin in general, we would then follow him out of fear. Like as right. of right now, we would hear, oh, when one of the angels messed up and then he just killed him, just got rid of him. Yeah. I'd sit there and be scared and be like, okay, I, I won't yeah. do anything or mess up or anything of that sort or else it's the same thing is going to happen to me. So then we would end up looking at God like, oh, he isn't the loving God that we claim that he is. Because if one person was able to mess up and he just got rid of them, 
the same thing could happen to me. Yeah, that is like he will not be seen as a god as we should expect him to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, the last question for our cornerstone discussion is, who in the Bible had the same type of fall as Lucifer did? Um, I think a lot of people in the Bible had the same type of fall, but not all of them completely turned away from God. Mm -hmm. They always came back to God. Mm -hmm. And I, I will give an example of Moses. You see, Moses was God's guy, I should say. Mm -hmm. He was the one who, at the time of his era, you could see that he was leading everything. But it got to a time he felt that these people were asking for water to drink. All right, let's get them something. He forgot the God who he has been with. He felt that he is the boss now. Mm -hmm. And that he said, you rebels, here's your water. He was supposed to just show the stick to, to, the, to the rock, but he hit it. Mm -hmm. And the rock at that time is defined as Christ. So sort of he hit Christ rather mm -hmm. than to just do as expected. Mm -hmm. And we know the consequence of what happened to him. He never got a chance to go to Canaan, mm -hmm. but he was taken up to heaven. He's part of the people in heaven. Mm -hmm. So he had a U-10. Mm -hmm. So the lesson is clear. We should make sure that we don't repeat the pride, selfishness, mm -hmm. and avoiding the second look so that we don't have ourselves in the place of Moses at that time and Satan, his consequence that he's facing now. Mm -hmm. I say someone in the Bible who had like the same type of downfall is like Judas Iscariot, right. who he had pride and he thought him coming to follow Jesus, especially since he was like the smartest out of all the disciples that him following Jesus was really like he's about to come and be king, rule over the Romans and be and like Judas can be on his side and be considered one of those like great people. But when that wasn't happening, he easily let pride like be his downfall. Mm. He was able to just take money and afterwards like wasn't able to gain forgiveness for what he did. Right. But thank you guys for your answers to both the PowerPoint and um, Cornerstone discussion. So now we'll have um, Mr. C to give us a moral summary that we can get from both of us. All right. What I'll say to what we've learned so far is simple. Regardless of how we think we are, whatever thing that we are able to do, we should ascribe everything to God. Mm -hmm. If we acknowledge God in our lives as he who created us, as he to whom everything we do, and we are able to do beyond imaginations are from him. With that, it will take away the pride that we see in the syndrome mm -hmm. where Satan established that. If we are able to see this as a category where we don't play with, as God's only attribute, it will make our relationship with others very easy because you know that what I'm able to do, what you are able to do, has nothing to do with your ability, but somebody gave it to you. Mm -hmm. It makes it easy for us to praise God too. All right, and the consistency in our praise would result in God doing much in us. But if we go the opposite, whereby we think it is us, we are the bosses of our own lives. Satan is happy, not God. Mm -hmm. All right, so we should make sure that whatever thing that we're doing, the praise and thanks, even if we are being um, uh, respected for what we do, we should ascribe every glory to God. With that, it makes our lives easy and. Our Christianity is worth a relation by others. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your more summary. Um, so that is the um, end of our show. So Mr. Satitu, may I ask you for a closing prayer? All right. Shall we pray? Good and heavenly Father God, we thank you for what you've done for us. We've learned so much today. All that we are saying is help us to ascribe everything we are able to do to your glory. We have nothing that is beyond us. Satan established this bad deed and it didn't work for him. We have more to learn. As we are kids now, help us to grow into becoming good future leaders. Be with us. Whatever thing that we do, help us to be of glory, which is only by yourself. Guide us today, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you, Michelle and Mr. Sutitu, for joining us today. And thank you to all our viewers and people in the comments for all the comments that you made um, towards our um, discussion. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe at Cincinnati Ghanaian SDA Church. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.